Merry Christmas guys from JVM Lecture Series and today I'm going to discuss about spiral or transition curves. Let me introduce you first the highway curves. Okay. For highway curves, if you are designing the geometric design of highway, okay, you have to consider generally two things. You have the horizontal curves and the vertical curves. In horizontal curves, you basically have simple curves, compound curves, reverse curves, transition curves. And for vertical curves, you know the idea of symmetric, parabolic, and unsymmetric parabolic curve. So in this video, I'm going to discuss about transition curves. For transition curves, we have clotoid or Euler's spiral, cubic parabola, and luminescate. But in the type of transition curve that I'm going to discuss to you here is the clotoid or the Euler's spiral. The basic curve is the simple curve. So let me say that this is the point of curvature and this is point of tangency, which is technically a simple curve is just a sector of a circle. Okay? And you know, the compound curve, these are curve that is made up of, of two or more different radius of simple curve. So this is PC, this is PCC, and this is PT. And for reverse curve, this is just a curve made up of simple curve with different direction of curvature. Okay, so that's why this is PC. This is the point of reverse curvature and this is the point of tangency. So I'm just introducing to you the different types of horizontal curves. But this curve, compound and reverse, they are just made of this simple curve. So what is special about transition curve and what makes it different from this? Look, this is a simple curve. As you notice, as the vehicle traverses the simple curve, it experiences a constant value of radius of curvature. Of course, circle has a constant radius of curvature. And how about the transition spiral? Look at our animation. As you can see, the as the vehicle traverses the transition curve, the radius is constantly changing and changing as it moves around it okay the question is why do you need to employ such type of curve these are the principal advantages of transition curve in horizontal alignment this is the first principal reason number one a properly designed transition curve provides a natural easy to follow path for drivers such that the centrifugal force increases or decreases gradually as a vehicle enters or leaves a circular curve. Let us consider a simple curve first. We learned from dynamics that a body moving around a circle experiences an acceleration towards the center of the circle and that is called the centripetal acceleration in calculus we are calling it a sub n or normal component of acceleration because it is perpendicular to the direction of motion or the tangent line okay so which has a value of v squared all over r and also we learn from the dynamics that there is a force known as reverse effective force that is opposite to the direction of acceleration so in this case, we have a force which is basically known as centrifugal force. Okay, this is the reverse effective force that is opposite to the direction of centripetal acceleration. And, and from the Newton's second law of motion, m times a. So therefore, this will be mv squared all over r. So take note, guys, the vehicle is moving around a simple curve with constant value of r. So if a certain vehicle is moving in a constant velocity, it also experiences a constant value of the centrifugal force. So we're going to limit ourselves here for a vehicle that is moving in a constant velocity. So what is the problem about this? Take note that not all vehicles always start from, from the circular curve. So 
Let me take an example. There is a straight tangent road here. There is a vehicle here. Okay? And of course, since the vehicle is moving in a straight line, we know for a fact that for a straight line in mathematics, the radius of curvature is infinite. Therefore, the value of the centrifugal force is zero. The driver does not experience a centrifugal force if the vehicle is moving in a straight line. But look at this. What will happen if this vehicle suddenly enters the circular curve? And for a circular curve, the centrifugal force that is experienced by the occupant of the vehicle is mv squared over r. Whereas on a straight road, the centrifugal force is zero. If that is the case, there will be a sudden increase of centrifugal force from zero to mv squared over r. And also the same thing will happen as it leaves the curve. There is a abrupt or sudden change or instant change of centrifugal force, which is bad for the vehicle and its occupant and for the totality of traffic. That's why engineers employ a special curve to provide a transition time for the driver to change from the value of centrifugal force is equal to zero to a full value of mv squared all over r. And that is known as the transition curve. So say for example, that is the tangent. To avoid sudden increase of centrifugal force and there is a preparation time, the engineer provide this a very beautiful transition curve. And from this idea, we can actually discuss or understand the basic property of a spiral curve. Okay, look at this. Let us name some important points here. Of course, this is the simple curve. You have a radius. Okay, so this point, tangent, we're going to call it tangent to spiral. So the red line is the transition or the spiral curve. And then this point is spiral to curve curve to spiral and spiral to tangent. So what is the basic property of a spiral? Say for example, your vehicle is on TS. The value of centrifugal force here should be equal first to zero. And as the vehicle moves around towards the curve, okay, the value of centrifugal will constantly increase the centrifugal force should change constant or uniformly the the change should be linear so the centrifugal force from the value of zero it will change increase linearly from zero to the full value of centrifugal force which is equal to mv squared all over R. For you to understand the idea, let us take a certain point along the transition spiral. And of course, let just for the notation, let me call this capital R as the radius of cur curvature on the simple curve. Okay. And let me say that a small r is the value of radius of curvature at any point in the spiral. So, so that the centrifugal force is mv squared all over r. So this r is a variable. Instead of expressing the centrifugal force in terms of r, I'm going to introduce to you another quantity known as curvature, okay? That is k. k is just 1 over r. So we are just talking about absolute values of curvature. So Therefore, we can simply say that centrifugal force is equivalent to mass times v square times k, which is equivalent to 1 over r. This one is k. Okay? So that is the centrifugal force in the spiral. So as I said a while ago, the centrifugal force should increase linearly since the value of m of course the mass of the vehicle will not change as it moves and the velocity is constant also therefore to provide a linear change in centrifugal force the curvature which is the reciprocal of the radius should also be changed linearly so to give you a deeper 
better ways to understand it, let us graph the value of curvature. Let us differentiate the simple curve to transition curve. Say for example, you have a simple curve from PC to PT. And to have a better visualization about it, let us graph the curvature. This is PC and this is PT. So I just stretch it out. In this coordinate, let us say this is the curvature or equivalent to 1 over R. As I said a while ago, the, curve, the radius of curvature of the simple curve is constant. Meaning to say, if you want to graph it, this will look like this. This is just a flat graph, which is equivalent to the curvature is 1 over R. Me, I just want to show that the curvature of the simple curve is constant from PC to PT. And if you have a compound curve, let me say that this is R1 and R2. This is PC, this is PCC, and this is PT. So if you're going to graph the curvature of that, okay, well, this is PC, this is PCC, and this is PT. This axis is the curvature or equivalent to the reciprocal of the radius. Definitely, the graph will look like this. This is 1 over R1, and for from PCC to PT, this will be 1 over R sub 2. These are the graph of the curvatures of simple curve and compound curves. For reverse curve, uh, I don't need to show it. It is just the same. We just change the direction of curvature. So how about the transition spiral? Look. Let me say that this point is TS being your origin. And then this is the spiral to curve so that this one from here to here represent the length of the spiral. And let me say that this is 1 over, th this is k which is equivalent to 1 over r. So basically, as I said a while ago, the centrifugal force which has a formula of mv squared times 1 over r which is technically the, this one is the curvature. The centrifugal force should change linearly, definitely the value of k should also change in linear fashion. So it means starting from Ts, since the centrifugal force is zero and the radius is infinite, definitely the curvature of the spiral from Ts, the curvature is equal to zero. So I'm going to plot it. And as you move along, the value of k increases linearly. So the graph will look like this until such time when the point reaches SC, we reach a curvature which is equivalent to 1 over r, which is the reciprocal of the radius of the simple curve. So if you're going to graph the curvature of a simple curve, it will look like this. This is 0 and this is 1 all over r. So if you want to know the exact value of the curvature or the radius of curvature of a certain spiral at any point, say for example, 2 meter from TS, you, you just plot from here, you go 2 meter from here, and then you locate what is the ordinate. And the ordinate will be the value of curvature. And if you want to get the radius of curvature, you just take the inverse or the reciprocal of it. So that is the property of a spiral curve as a curve. Okay, what are the other reasons? Why do you need to put a spiral? Number two, the transition curve length provides a convenient, desirable arrangement for super elevation runoff. What does it mean, guys? This is the simple curve. And say, let us say we don't provide a transition curve so that this will be your straight tangent line. Okay, you know for a fact that if a certain highway is curved, you need to provide a super elevation. So what does the super elevation looks like? So if you're going to cut this section and show me the cross section of the road, this is the width of the road. And to allow for banking of vehicles, you provide a super elevation like this one. Okay. But if you are just traveling on a straight road, you don't need to provide 
this instead you are just providing a crown section that is to provide not for banking but for drainage of water look on ts since the radius of curvature is zero you don't need to provide a super elevation it is a level section because the curvature here is zero the radius of curvature here is infinite that's why there is no banking needed in this section but as you move along towards the simple curve you need a full value of super elevation e look at this if the section in ts is like this one as shown in the presentation if this is level section because you don't need a super elevation in ts and for sc starting from sc you need a full value of super elevation therefore it is very bad to change the section of road from this to this instantly that's why there is a transition of cross section so one of the function of the transition is to provide a change from this level section to super elevation so that the, the change of super elevation is not abrupt it changes gradually like this okay another reason why do you need to provide a super elevation is this one the spiral facilitates the transition in width where the travel width section is to be widened around a circular curve. Let us say that this is the simple curve. And then this is the tangent. Say for example, you don't provide a spiral curve. The width of the road is like this and you want to increase the width in the curve portion. You see, this is very bad because there is a sudden increase in width that is not good for the traffic flow and for all the vehicles. So, if we provide transition, look at this. If there is a transition, there is a preparation for the traffic to move from the smaller width to the larger width of the spiral. That's why it's very good also to the traffic flow. Also in this one. So, you also have to provide a transition so that there is a preparation for the traffic to change from the wider road towards the smaller one. So you know, in traffic, the sudden increase or decrease or change of width of the road is not good for the traffic because the vehicle will try to overtake one another instantly and that will cause an accident okay and of course this is number four the appearance of the highway of a street is as hand is enhanced by the application of spiral so if you take a drone and look for a shot from the top you will see that if you employ a spiral curve the general appearance of the highway will be better what are the geometric properties of spiral and spiral with simple curve you watch the second part of my video i'm going to solve there a problem